Like most of us, you've probably experienced some challenges with the SKU. It can be a pretty unforgiving tool until you understand some of the characteristics that make up the design of the SKU that you're using. Also, you need to understand how your body incorporates into the equation to help you control the SKU at the lathe. We're going to talk a little bit about the design of the SKU and how that impacts how it behaves when you put the edge to the wood. We're going to use this model of a radius edge skew to take a look at the three variables that make up the characteristics of any skew. First variable, cross section of the shank. Second variable, edge profile as seen from the side. Third variable, bevel configuration that makes up the shape of the bevel. Let's take a look. First variable, shank cross section. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. There's a lot of different variations on each design within each variable. So we'll keep it simple. First shape, more traditional, a rectangular shank cross section. Second shape, it's a little bit of a variation on this, but it's pretty common. Chamfered edges, a radius bottom, and a flat top. Third configuration is an oval skew. This one I'm going to do flat top, flat bottom, and a nice even curve. Fourth configuration is a little bit of a variation on this, but it's pretty common as well as an oval skew. One where the belly of the curve goes right into this radius lower edge. And the fifth configuration is a round shank. This is the first variable, shank cross section. Second variable is edge profile, looking at the skew from the side. Most traditional is about a 70 degree angle. And the bevel or the heel of the bevel or the bevel edge mirrors that angle. Second is a radius edge. Where the bevel heel or the bevel edge mirrors the edge as well. And third configuration, which is a little bit of a variation on this, is one that has a straight section and then radius straight section and then radius. This particular design comes in a di couple different bevel configurations with the heel of the bevel. And I'm going to draw this as straight and then curved where it mirrors the edge. This section is the straight section. The third variable happens to be the bevel composition. Bevel composition can be a straight bevel, so looking at the long point, a hollow grind, and I'm exaggerating here so that you can see. This would be more typical off of a grinding wheel. And a third configuration would be a convex bevel. I'll exaggerate this as well. And a fourth configuration would be a multifacet, which acts or behaves a little bit like a convex bevel. This would be a multifacet flat, hollow grind, or convex. It's multifaceted. I'm going to draw this and exaggerate a little bit as well. Let's do a hollow grind. You may not have that many facets, but I'm exaggerating to make a point. And this can be done intentional or unintentional. Taking a look at these three variables, you have five versions of a shank cross section, three basic versions of an edge profile, and four versions, remember this can be intentional or unintentional, but four versions of a bevel composition Combined, if you do the math, well, let's see, five versions times three is 15, times four 
you've got 60 different variations of a skew, 60 completely different characters. The specific skew I'm going to be highlighting in this video, the Lofstrom 3 8 inch round shank convex bevel skew. I know it's a mouthful, but it specifies the character of the skew. In the name it gives you, well, the variables. Round shank, 3 8 inch diameter. It's a straight edge and it happens to be a convex bevel. So this is the basic character makeup of that skew. Now you might be wondering why would I choose that configuration of skew? Well we'll talk about that in just a minute. This skew behaves a little bit different than any other skew on the market right now, any of the other combinations, and there's good reason why I've chosen to use it. You might be asking, can I make all six cuts with these other designs of skew? Absolutely you can, but I chose this specific configuration because it makes all six cuts beautifully. It's very forgiving as well. If you use another design of skew, absolutely you could make those six cuts, but you may have a little bit more sanding, you might have some bruising of fibers, or you might find that it's a little bit temperamental and difficult to control. Let's take a look at the skew anatomy. There are three basic parts to any skew. The edge, with a long point and a short point, a bevel on each side, with the heel of the bevel, and the tool shank. These basic parts make up any skew.